Let's start by installing the Windows feature WDS Deployment on our soon-to-be WDS server. Be sure to include the management tools to get the WDS, MMC, and PowerShell module. We can see the command completed successfully and a reboot is not required. Use the WDS command line utility to initialize the server. Specify where you would like your remote install to be. Best practice is to use a separate partition. I am placing the command output in a variable because it can spew out some unhelpful warnings. Just ensure that the last line says the command completed successfully and you know your WDS server is up and running. Next, we need to add a boot image and at least one install image before we can really do anything with it. So let's import the boot.wim. I will specify the path to the Windows 10 ISO mounted on our WDS server. This can take 30 seconds or so to import. Next, we will import the install image. This is the image that will actually be deployable after we are done. We should create an image group to store it in. This can be named whatever you want, but you will want to logically group your images somehow. I will call my group desktops. A WIM on an install media can have several images on it. We can use the get windows image command to list the images. Then use the image name we want to import with the import WDS install command. This import will take much longer because it's a full operating system image. At this point, our WDS server is ready to test. You can either configure Pixie Boot or create and use a discovery image to test. I'll boot to an image I already have made on our test machine. After our discovery media boots, we can select our language and type our administrator password. We can see that the image on our WDS server is ready to be deployed. Thanks for watching.